we had a rally, but once again, they sold into it. I want to show you the S&P futures because Mario Draghi not only moved Europe, he moved us. See that big blip up? That's Mario Draghi essentially repeating the almost whatever it takes speech he gave. That was good for 14 points on the S&P. But as you can see, we opened up and they sold right into it. We did go negative briefly. We're basically flat on the day. Over uh, in Europe, uh, Germany moved up. Of course, the euro weakened. The dollar strengthened against that. Uh, they are still on the upside. You see the effect there that Mario Draghi had that straight up move there. And they're still up though, off of the highs. Uh, not so good in Asia, though. Uh, big down day. Shanghai was down over 3 percent. Hang Seng down 1.8. Japan down 2.4 percent. <laughs> you think we're having a rough year. Japan's down almost 16 percent for the year. That's just the year to date. Here in the U.S., kind of a blase here. Not a lot of trends right now. So telecom, consumer discretionary, energy up for actually health care down a little bit. Still not clear on the trends. For the earnings, the banks are coming in. We're finally getting the regional bank numbers here. I would say they're fair, not great. Huntington Bank shares beat on revenue. Shift third beat. I'm looking at the revenue numbers here. Key Corp match, BB&T. Uh, missed a little bit here. Here's my impression of the regional banks so far and what's been going on with them. The fee incomes, income seems to be up. Uh, provision expenses are higher. Um, expenses are also higher. Net interest margins are kind of flattish. And average loan growth is, eh, it seems to be up fractionally, up 0.2% quarter over quarter for a lot of these companies. I'd call this so far fair, not great for the banks overall. Uh, airlines, a little more interesting. Southwest matched their... their, their uh, uh, light on revenues, though. United Continental, they missed on sales and earnings. I don't know what's going on there. They talked about lower business travel. Uh, it, the jet fuel costs are certainly a big, big uh, 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 help for them. Look at this. The average fuel costs are down 36 percent. Fuel prices were $1.73 a gallon now in the fourth quarter. A year ago, they were $2.69. That seems to be a real help for them. Uh, I don't know why it wasn't more of a help. They certainly didn't cut the airline fares. Thank you very much. Maybe the expectations were too high uh, for them overall here. Uh, speaking of earnings, we are now, oh, we've got about 60 companies reporting. That's not a huge number so far uh, of the 500. Uh, 69 have beat on earnings. That is exactly an average number. And we're still light on revenues. Still half the companies are missing on revenues. Remember, they've already lowered the expectations. This is a big problem and a major disappointment. We're still not getting any revenue uh, 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 growth at all here. Uh, finally, on the big question of whether last, yesterday was capitulation, a lot depends on your view on whether or not we're in a bear market. Remember, we are so far only down 13 percent from the May highs last year. That's a garden variety correction here. The key point, though, is big rallies do occur in down markets, in bear markets. Uh, thanks to Lowry here, this, this data is very interesting. Of 50 largest S&P daily gains, the 50 biggest daily gains since 1940, 31 of them have occurred in down markets, in bear markets. That's 60 percent of the time. So uh, if you think this is a garden variety correction, there's a good chance the, uh, the bottom yesterday was, uh, was quite close to where we're going to end up. But if you don't, obviously, you think other things are coming here. Judging by the way they sold right into this rally today on talks of potential stimulus from Draghi, a lot of people feel there's still some more to go.